Good morning, Living Word Fellowship. It's good to be here with you guys this morning. I wish we could be here in person, but I think that's coming soon. But until then, we're just going to praise the Lord from where you are, sitting down, laying down, whatever you're doing. Let's get up and praise the Lord. But first, I need to read something that I wrote this morning from Philippians. Paul was talking to them and getting things and greatly rejoicing that he was getting gifts from them. And he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So I just want to encourage everybody this morning. So let's go to the mountain of the Lord and praise the Lord. Let's go to the mountain of the Lord and meet with Him. Let us rise above this serpent and draw near to Him. Let us lay our cares in Thank you, Father God, that the freedoms that we have, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're always on the throne. You've never left the throne. You're always there, Father God, for us, taking care of us, blessing us, Lord, healing us. Lord, it's amazing how incredible you are. Thank you, Father God, for the freedoms we have in this country. Thank you, Lord God, for those who've gone before us, Lord, and fought battles for us and spilled blood for us, Lord God, men and women 
who have given us the freedoms we have today. What a great country we live in. And we know, Father God, that you're going to continue to bless this country in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's sing Proud to be an American. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I worked for all my life. And I had to start again with just my children and my wife. I thank my God above to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died And gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. for a lot of people out there right now, and uh, all we can do is trust the Lord. I know it sounds pretty cliche, but uh, that's what we have to do. If you're one of them and they're struggling, then God's got something for you. Don't fret. Trust in the Lord. That's what his songs were singing about. And you know what? If you're not struggling, help somebody who is. You know, encourage them, whatever you can do. But God is God, man, and he's good, and he always will be. Don't fret. <laughs> Where you are, 
is Memorial Day. It is a day in which we as Americans stop and we honor the brave men and women who gave their lives for the course of freedom. It is a time in which we have picnics, concerts, movies, and family get-togethers. But for others, it's going to be a time for going to cemeteries and placing flags on the grave sites of precious loved ones. There is 290 to 300 uh, men and women who have, who have been placed to rest in the New Haven Cemetery. And every year we pause and we have a service up there. This year we won't be able to do that along with other communities because of the COVID virus. But I would like to share with you today a trait that must be found in any person who would seek to accomplish any task, whether in war or in life. That trait is called persevering faith. We have to keep on in spite of the difficulties, the circumstances, the problems, the conflicts that come up in our life. We have to persevere. You say, Pastor, what does it mean to persevere? It means to try hard and continuously in spite of obstacles and difficulties. That's Webster's definition. Let me read it again. To try hard and continuously in spite of obstacles and difficulties that might come your way. One of my favorite Bible verses in the New Testament as a pastor is Hebrews 11.6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. To please who? To please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Let me quote that again. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. What type of faith is he talking about? Persevering faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. 
I'm going to share with you today some Bible verses, a couple little stories about individuals who kept on keeping on in spite of the situations, difficulties, obstacles, mountaintops that came their way. They kept on going. If you and I are to accomplish anything in life, we are going to have to learn how to persevere. That's not a verse that, and that's not something that people like to hear. Uh, from time to time, I'll have different individuals that have said to me, well, you know, Pastor, you just love God, and, and you just love getting in the Bible every day, and you just love praying every day, and you like, just love going out and talking to people about Jesus every day. I got some news for you today. That's not true sometimes. Sometimes I just want to stay home in my jammies. Sometimes I just want to uh, uh, be alone and be able to just sit back and think about how good God's been to me. But sometimes I'm not pressing in. But the blessings that we're all longing for in our Christian life come when we persevere and we press in in spite of whether we want to do that or not. I'm going to share a passage with you right now. It's found in Daniel chapter 6. And I'm going to read it. It takes a little bit of time, but I, I think if you take it out of context, it doesn't have the strength that I want it to have this morning. Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 16. Please, Darius, to set over the kingdom 120 princes to be over his kingdom. And over these, three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the princes might give account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the princes sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault, because he was faithful, nor was there any error or fault Found in him. How many, how many of us wouldn't like that to be said about us? Nobody could find any fault, couldn't find any errors because we're faithful and because we just keep on following the Lord no matter what. I'd like to say that's true of me, but sometimes that's not so true. Then these men said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. They're saying, all we know is this guy keeps on serving God no matter what. The only way we're going to find anything against him is if we can find it against the law of his God. So the governors and princes thronged before the king and said, Thus to him, King Darius, live forever. I, I like to say there are a bunch of individuals that are going to tell the king what he wants to hear just because they want to get in his good graces. All the governors... Of the kingdom, the administrators and princes, the counselors and advisors have consulted together, O king, to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for thirty days, except for you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore King Darius signed the written decree. Now when Daniel knew, and circle that word, knew people. When Daniel knew, not he had heard, but when he knew that it was already signed, that the writing was signed, he went home, and in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day, and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom, since early days. I want you to underline those six words. As was his custom since early days. It should be seven words there. He knew it, but he didn't change his custom. But without faith, without persevering faith, it's impossible to please God. Daniel could have said at that time, listen, I'm not losing my life over some uh, over following the Lord. I'm just going to give in. 
Nobody's going to know about it. I'm not in Jerusalem anymore. I'm here among the Medes and Persians. I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to just act, act like I'm a believer. And, but I won't be so outspoken about this anymore because I don't want to lose my life. But watch it. He doesn't do that. He opens the windows, gets down on his knees, did not change. He kept continually, perseveringly, diligently serving God. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. In other words, their plan worked. We got him. He's going against the decree. He's going against what the king has said, that you can't pray to anyone but our God. But Daniel didn't do that. He kept on praying towards his God. And he went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed the decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter and does not change. So they answered and said before the king, That Daniel, think about that, that Daniel, you know, king, think about this, son. Uh, insolency of this um, Jewish individual that he's not going to pray to anyone but you. I mean, anyone to his God, O King. He's not going to do that. He's not going to keep this decree. That Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard for you, O King, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. Wasn't displeased with Daniel. He's displeased with himself that he had let these other ones con him into making a decree against this guy that he knew loved God and was, had always been favorable and shown love and, and devotion towards him as a king. And he labored all the going down of the sun to deliver Daniel. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians, that no decree or statutes which a king establishes may be changed. They said, King, listen, you signed it. This is what you wanted. And you know what? It can't be changed unless you change it. So the king gave the command. And they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, or perseveringly, or diligently, he will deliver you. Now, skip forward to verse 20. And when he came to the den, they, they did what the king did, and he, he had, what he had said he was going to do, he was going to, Daniel was going to be thrown in the lion's den. The king is losing sleep, but Daniel's not losing sleep. And in verse 20, it says, And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? This is the point I want to drive home this morning. You can't serve God, and you can't occasionally serve God. You can't one day live for God, several days not live for Him. And then expect God to deliver you from obstacles and situations that come up in your life. It's not a consistently loving, trusting, waiting on God life. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, who perseveringly seek Him, who continually seek Him, who never give up, never quit seeking Him. That's the kind of faith He wants to see from His children and the Bible says, Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? It's not talking about those who read a little devotional card once a day and that's all they do. The rest of the time is theirs. It's not talking about someone who prays just on the National Day of Prayer and the rest of the time is theirs. It's not talking about somebody who they pray over their meals, but the rest of the time they watch things and do things that are contrary to the Word of God and they expect God to deliver them. That's not what's going to take place. Daniel got delivered because he had persevering faith. Even in spite of difficult times, he was in a place where he didn't want to be. He was in a kingdom that he didn't want to be in. He was a Jewish captive, yet he had made the best of the situation that he found himself in. 
and kept on following and obeying God no matter what everybody else told him to do. That's the kind of faith that Jesus is looking for. It's the kind of faith that says, listen, I'll die before I'll recant. I will throw in the towel. Uh, in, uh, I, I will never throw in the towel when it comes to my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm living for him no matter what. There's a New Testament example of that. And it's found over in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. Paul has not wanted to, uh, to have to defend his faith. He wanted them to just look around and see that, listen, a person doesn't do what I've done. A person doesn't write two-thirds of the New Testament. A person doesn't uh, get stoned many, many times without having something in the tank. I am serving God because I love Him, not because you're paying me to serve Him. Are they ministers of Christ, he said, 2 Corinthians 11, 23. I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measures. Talk about getting strapped with a, a, with a whip. In prisons, more frequently. In deaths, often. From the Jews, Five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Five times he had 39 stripes put across his back. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. People, what am I trying to say? Listen, Paul lived his life for the Lord. Once he came to faith in Christ, he was living for the Lord no matter what. But any one of those things that I've just read, if you and I had went through any one of those things, there's nine out of ten times a lot of people would have just said, I give up. I give up. But Paul didn't. He pressed in, in there. Sometimes as Christians, you have to press through some things. It's persevering. You've got to keep going in spite of the difficulties. In journeys often, in dangers of waters, in dangers of peril, in dangers of my countrymen, in, in dangers of Gentiles, in dangers in this city, in dangers in the wilderness, in dangers in the sea, in dangers among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness of, often, in hunger and in thirst, in fastings many times, in cold and in nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, the care of of the churches. Paul's commenting on how he had lived his life since he had met Christ. No matter what comes my way, Paul was saying, I'm going to live for God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Without persevering faith, it's impossible to please Him. Without pressing in, it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. I look at my life since I've come to Christ. There have been times when uh, the wind was just taken out of my sails, so to speak. It, things weren't going the way that I wanted them to go. I thought it would be a whole lot easier in ministry than what it has been. I thought that when we were going to build a church that everybody would want to donate and everybody would want to give and everybody would want to see this go up like I wanted it to go up. I thought everybody would want to get behind and, and start teaching and preaching and taking and over classes and leading by example. But I found out that there's a select few that will do that. But by and large, most people want to coast through their Christian life. They want one of them bikes where you, you can pedal, they used to call them coasters, and then just uh, ride, the, ride the speed that you've uh, 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 been blessed with. Just coast through life. I remember being in restaurants and having an individual say, come on over here, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And they asked me, did I find my life as going uphill and then down like that? Going uphill and then down like that. Going uphill and down like that. And they said, I said, no, I find my life like this. I learn a truth, I get established in that, then I go up a little bit higher. I learn a truth, get established in that, and I go up a little bit higher. The, the song is pressing on the upward way. New heights we're gaining every day. This is what they're talking about, is pressing in, persevering, 
going through difficulties, but never throwing the towel in and saying, I quit. Paul didn't do it. Persevering faith keeps on going when everyone says, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just quit? I've seen different pastors that have been uh, friends of mine in, through the years, and a lot of them have dropped out of the race. And they've dropped out of the race because times got tough. I want you to know if you've, if, if you've sensed a call in your life for ministry, there are going to be some lean years. There are going to be some tough times. There's going to be some exuberant times, some rejoicing times, some happy-go-lucky times. There's going to be exhilarating times. But I want you to know there's going to be some times where you're going to have to press in and keep going forward in spite of obstacles and difficulties that come your way. I've had loved ones in my family die. I still had to preach. I remember my mother had died and uh, I didn't really want to preach, but yet I felt that I needed to preach. I needed to press into that because my mother was the kind of individual that, listen, I'm going to serve God no matter what. When her friends started saying, well, you know, if you're not going to be any fun to hang around with anymore, they stopped coming over. But she kept on living for the Lord. When different ones in her family would give her a little difficult time, she didn't throw in her faith and say, well, if, if that's what it's going to take in order for them to be my friend, I'll stop coming to church. She kept on coming to church. She kept on reading the Word, kept on praying in it. She was able to lead a lot of ones in our family to the Lord because of her persevering faith. But how about you today? Are you ready to throw in the towel because of the coronavirus? Are you ready to throw in the towel because... Things aren't going as smooth, as smooth in your marriage as you'd like them to. Are you willing to throw in the towel right now because your children are giving you such a difficult time? Are you going to throw in the towel right now because it's not going the way you wanted it to go in your church? Are you, are you going to throw in the towel because things aren't going the way you wanted it to go? That's not persevering faith. Persevering faith, even if, even if you were in a situation that you don't like, begin to pray. And say, Lord, I believe you're going to work in this situation. I've uh, been paying attention to, a, to Louis Palau and uh, his son and, uh, and, Lu, uh, and his son's wife, Wendy. And they're talking about winning one billion people in this decade to Jesus Christ. What a wonderful dream. What a wonderful vision. What a wonderful plan. But I want them and everyone else to know in order for that to take place, we're going to have to persevere. He who goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seed. Weeping, bearing precious seed. He who goes forth with a love and a concern that when you're seeing that they're not accepting Christ as soon as you, as quick as you thought, you still got to press in and say, I will not stop. I'm going to keep on teaching and preaching the word. Some will believe. I'll never forget hearing the story of a starfish and a little boy was throwing these starfish back into the ocean that had washed up on the shore. And somebody watched him and said, Little boy, what are you trying to do? You can't save them all. He said, No, but he said, I can save some. And he would throw them back. See, it matters about how, God's not going to say, How many did you win? He's going to say, Have you been faithful unto death? Have you persevered? Have you pressed in even when things were not going your way? In Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 through 19. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields are yielding no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there's no herd in the stalls. Don't miss this. It says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. He's saying, I count in the six or seven things there. He says, even though they're going wrong, yet I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to keep on going. The Lord God is my strength, he says. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And I'm going to dig in, is what he's saying. And he will make me walk on my high hills. So, He's saying, I'm going to walk on the high spots of the earth because I'm willing to persevere in my faith. 
nothing fires me up anymore than I, when I look at the scriptures and I see Jesus' attitude towards the cross. Jesus, many, many times, had told his disciples that he was going to go to Jerusalem. They were going to beat him. They were going to do all these things with him. He was going to die, and three, late, three days later, he was going to rise from the dead. Now, I don't know about you, but if I knew that what was going to take place to me down the road, I would have been a little hesitant. But for eons of time, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was bruised before the foundation of the world, that God had a plan before the foundation of the world, that was that Jesus was going to die. Jesus knew all those things. He knew all the scriptures, the conflict of the age. He knew everything that was going to transpire. Now he comes to this earth. He's born in Bethlehem's manger. He grows up. He's 30 years old. He begins his public ministry. Now he's getting towards the end of that three years. He's going up to Jerusalem. Don't miss this. Verse 51, Luke 9. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up. Received up where? To glory. That he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Persevering faith. He steadfastly set his face that he was going to go up to Jerusalem. Look at verse 62 in the same chapter. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I was... With my wife the other day, we were driving around out in the country because not too much to do because of this coronavirus. I said, I'm, I'm going stir crazy here in this house. Let you and I go for a drive. And we went by some of these fields of uh, these huge amounts of acreage out there in, in north, uh, northern Macomb County, northern St. Clair County, all the way on up to uh, Snover. We went up there, and, and I said to my wife, I said, she said, how long would it ta take to plow one of those fields or to bale one of those fields? We used to bale a lot of hay as kids growing up. And, you know, you pull into a 100-acre field and you know you're not going to get out of there until the hay is put on the trailers and it's transported out of there. Yet. And so you begin to see the importance of persevering, the importance of persistence, the importance of hanging in there, even in spite of how difficult it was going to be. We still laugh about bologna sandwiches and gallons of water and how good it tastes, uh, even if you got a little mustard to catch up on it out in the middle of summertime. But pressing in, finishing a task, finishing a task with a smile on your face and joy in your heart that you had made it all the way. There are going to come times in our life where we would just, the easiest thing to do would be to just quit. But you'll get no place that way. You'll accomplish nothing that way. You'll never see people healed. You'll never see people won to faith in Jesus Christ. Pat Robertson was asked the other day, uh, someone had said they'd been praying for a son for 40 years and he hadn't come to faith in Christ. Should they stop? And Pat Robertson said, absolutely not. Keep on going. I watched this Palau son stand up and say, never stop praying for somebody. He said, my parents prayed for me for 27 years. And I'm in ministry now. Never stop praying. Never give up on people. Never throw in the towel. In life, we'll all, we'll all be faced with situations, troubles, conflicts, yes, even wars, over and over again. We're going to have to deal with things that we don't want to deal with. But with God and persevering faith, we can walk through them, might I add, victoriously. In Romans chapter 8, we find the scripture. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? In verse 35. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yet in all these things, in other words, he had to go through them. He had to be in them to get out of them. He said, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor things that come up in life, 
viruses, unemployment, situations in our marriage, hunger, welfare, church splits, individuals dying. Nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, building programs, nor height, nor debt, depth, and I might say debt too, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Persevering faith people presses in. That's what we need right now in so many homes. You know, I uh, hear people talk about divorce and they're just going to quit and get a divorce and you know that'll be the end of their problems. No, it'll just be more problems started in your children's life. More problems possibly started in your children's life because you didn't persevere, you didn't press in. You know, if you're having problems in your marriage because of things that are going on right now, get some counsel. Get in the Word. Get, talk with a pastor. Do something. Talk with a counselor, but don't quit. You know, I, I liked what someone said years ago. Someone asked a pastor if he ever wanted to divorce his wife. He said, no, I never wanted to divorce her. He said, kill her sometimes, but he said, never wanted to divorce her. And he was being facetious, but he was saying, every marriage is going to have some conflict. Every marriage is going to have some struggles. But if we'll turn to faith in God, the Bible says God's love never fails. Watch how God begins to turn that marriage around. I was talking to an individual this week, and I'm getting ready to close here right now, but I was talking to an individual this week. And him and I were talking about things that had come up in his life through the years. And him and I talked. He shared what he had went through, and I shared some of the things that I had went through. But I says, I want you to look at this scripture. Philippians 3.13 Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended or to understand everything that has happened in my life. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards a goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Doesn't that sound like persevering faith? I press. I put some effort into this. See, this easy believism in Christianity, and you just believe and you get everything you want. You get a new car, a new house. You get a place up north. You get one down south. You get to go on all exotic cruises, and you always have six-figure income. You always have gold on your neck and big nugget rings on your fingers, and all. you always have the whitest teeth and all those things. Your hair never gets gray and any of that. That's the kind of faith a lot of American Christians think Jesus promised. That's not what Jesus promised. Jesus promised an abundant life. You know what abundant life is? Having the Spirit of God in your life through every single stage that you go through. Have you said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. To have the life of God on the inside of you. The Bible says that he that believeth on the Lord, as the Scripture says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's what the abundant life is. It's not about things. All you have to do is do one funeral one time as a pastor and you can see no matter how much stuff people have, when they die it doesn't go back in that casket. It's gone. You can't take it with you. The only thing you can take with you is souls, people. People who have were won to faith in Jesus Christ because of what you did and said to them. That's what I want. Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Persevered. I just read all the different things Paul did. He says, listen, my life is coming to an end, but I have persevered. I'm pressed in. Do you have persevering faith today? Do you have faith in God today? I'd like to pray a prayer with you, and this will get you on this walk of faith that I'm talking about. Yes, there's going to be difficulties. I'm not going to lie to you. There'll be some difficulties. But if you'll persevere, if you'll continually trust God like Daniel did, if you'll continually trust God like Paul did, 
If you'll continually trust God as our Lord and Savior Jesus did. If you'll continually follow the faith of those kind of individuals. That's what the Bible talks about in Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, about, therefore seeing we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every measure and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience, patient, persevering faith, the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of our majesty and I. Persevering faith. If you want to get started, first off, you have to do this. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means I have, you have, anyone who's watching us today, you have all sinned. We've all sinned and come short of God's glory. And there's a penalty for that. That's Romans 6.23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. That means total separation from God forever. The wages of sin is death. Total separation from God forever. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that's a gift. But if I was to give you a gift, that gift will do you no good if you don't receive it. The word, the Greek word is lambano. It means to grasp, to take for your own, to say, yes, I will receive this gift, to embrace him. I remember the time I did that, when I embraced Christianity and embraced Jesus Christ. And I said, from this day on, I want to live for him. So you have to receive lambano, grab that gift and say, Lord, thank you for the gift of your son. Now, how do we do that? We do that by this way. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you say, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. Pray with me. Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. And I thank you that Jesus Christ came to save sinners. I thank you for the death of your son on the cross. I receive him as my Lord and Savior right now. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Now the good news, people, is this. The Bible says, To as many as received him, to them gave he the right to be called sons and daughters of God. This Memorial Day, I want you to honor your veterans. I want you to honor the grave sites of those who have died, who have persevered, so that we could have the type of life we have here in this America. But I also want you to remember what Christ did in order for you and I to have eternal life. And I want you to begin to persevere in your faith. When things come and, and, and they begin to shake you a little bit, turn to Him. If you build your house upon the Word of God and upon faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says it's an unshakable kingdom. Thank you for this day. Thank you for Memorial Day. Get with your family, get with your friends, and let them know God's love never fails. You be blessed. Amen.